Okay, so in this next activity, you and the students are going to learn about acids and bases. You can start out by asking the students if they can think of any acidic foods um, or foods that seem to have a lot of acid in them. And a lot of times students are going to talk about lemons or other citrus fruits because they kind of taste sour. You could say, okay, well in chemistry, the opposites of acids are bases. And can you think of bases that you would find in your house? And that's actually a lot harder to do. So explain to students that in a lot of chemistry labs, what you do is measure a solution um, to find its pH level. And a pH level measures whether something is acidic or basic. So a pH test will measure the level of acidity or basicity of a solution. Um, and the cool thing is that instead of using pH test strips, which you have to buy from a fancy science store, we're gonna use something we could find at the grocery store to test the pH level. And that is the awesome red cabbage. Because it turns out that red cabbage has a chemical in it that's naturally occurring called anthocyanin, and that actually is a pH indicator. So if you make juice out of red cabbage, you can use it to test whether something is an acid or a base, and we're gonna do that right now. So this is kind of a messy part, but I really encourage you to do this part in front of the students so that they can see that it truly is just cabbage and water that you're using to test these solutions. You probably want to make about 10 cups for the entire class. And the ratio is one leaf for every three cups of water. So this is three cups pre-measured in my blender. You want to tear it up into little pieces to just help it along. Remind the students that this is a non-tasting activity, so they should not taste anything in the experiment. And also warn them that red cabbage juice can stain. It'll stain things purplish blue, so they should wear gloves, and they should be really careful about cleaning up spills. Um, you, the PL, should be doing the blender work, just to be safe but you can have a student volunteer help you strain it. Okay, you wanna blend it really well. It would help to turn it on. Okay, you can ask the students to make observations at this point. What color did the cabbage juice turn, the water? And uh, you can see that even though it's called red cabbage, the water is actually purple. It's a bluish purple. And they definitely want to look at this really closely because they want to know what the starting point is. They want to know what the original color of the cabbage juice is. Blend it some more. Okay, so once you get to this point, that's fine. Next, we are going to strain it. One thing I should warn you about is that cabbage just smells really bad as well. <laughs> so wrap this up in a trash bag and throw it away, tie, tie up the trash bag and throw it away outside. Um, you definitely don't wanna leave this in a classroom. Again, you can have a student help you strain. I actually put a coffee filter inside the strainer and that's gonna catch all the cabbage pulp. And it's going to make the process of cleaning it up a lot easier. And you can see that I'm just putting it right over a pitcher. And that way you can put this pitcher on the materials station. And the groups can just come up and measure out how much they need in a cup and bring it back with them. Okay, so we're going to do a quick demo of the actual lab so you can see what the students will be doing. Remember that you're gonna receive student copies of the labs, and so they'll have this in front of them with all the background information and the steps on it, which uh, will help you a little bit in terms of freeing up some time for you to walk around and ask guiding questions and to encourage them to really make observations and predictions. 
I'll put that to the side. They're also going to have in color a cabbage juice pH level scale and they're going to use this to compare the color of their solutions um, to the pH level. So on the bottom you'll see that it has the pH levels and if the level is less than 7 that means it's an acid and if it's greater than 7 that means it's a base and if it's at 7 if it's that pretty blue color, like our liquid with just the cabbage juice in it, that's going to be a neutral. Okay, so we'll put that to the side. And um, the lab says that the first thing we're going to do is just use three cups. So we'll have that. And we'll just have the first cup with just the cabbage juice. So we know that's the, our comparison, what we're going to compare it to. And then we're going to first put in a little bit of household vinegar, just white vinegar, because we know that that's an acid. And we'll see what happens to it. They don't really have to use exact measurements for this, just a little bit will do. This is a little less than a teaspoon. And they'll see, like magic, a pretty color change, and that turns into a pretty pink violet. And they'll remember from the previous lesson, that one of the signs that a chemical reaction has occurred is a color change. So point that out to them, ask them, how do you know this is a chemical reaction? What are the signs? What evidence can you see? What observations can you make? And they should say, one of the four signs is a color change and that just happened. So there we go. Now we can compare it to the picture and it looks like it's somewhere between uh, a pH level of 3 and 4 um, and it definitely is in acid so they could just write down household vinegar right there to record their observation and then we're gonna keep it right here so this one we're gonna use um, this is gonna sound funny but powdered laundry detergent so definitely make sure it's powder because the liquid one doesn't work as well and you could ask them, what do you think this is, an acid or a base? And quite honestly, they probably don't know. <laughs> it's not something you really think about. So they could take a guess, and whatever they predict, they have to give an explanation for why they think so. Then they could put a little bit in. And you should also have some stir sticks available, just the really skinny craft sticks. And that really quickly turned into a very pretty kind of turquoise teal color. So we're going to compare it to our pH level scale sheet. And that is a pH of 11, which means that it's a base because 11 is greater than 7. Um, and so students can write down laundry detergent right next to pH 11 right there just to keep track and they can keep these three cups kind of as their um, base comparison so they know this is the original cabbage color this is a true acid with household vinegar and this is a true base with the laundry detergent and then with every other color they can kind of put them in between and make a pretty little rainbow okay so we're going to move on to the next step of our experiment at this point I've just laid out all of the cups. We have the laundry detergent powder here, which is clearly a base. And then right here we have the white vinegar, which is clearly an acid. And we found that out by comparing it to the cabbage juice pH level scale right here. You just compare the colors and it tells you the pH level down below. And I think before I said that the cabbage juice was a pH of 7, but it's actually a little bit darker than that. I think it's a pH of 8. So there's an instance where they can double check their findings against what's actually happening right there in front of them, which is pretty cool. But let's go ahead and test some more substances. We try to, except for the laundry detergent, choose materials that you can find in your kitchen. So for everything that they choose, definitely make sure they make a prediction and then give a reason for their prediction, and then do the experiment, and then make observations. So I'm gonna start with a lemon. I think that 
The lemon is going to be very acidic because lemons are usually super sour and we kind of connect sour foods with acid. So I think it's going to look kind of like the vinegar, maybe a little bit lighter since it's not as harsh as uh, vinegar is. And you can just cut the lemons into wedges. You don't have to be exact with this. and see if a magic color change happens. And again, ask them what's a color change a sign of, and it's a sign of a chemical reaction. So here we go. Now I guess my prediction was that it was gonna be a little bit lighter than household vinegar, but it's actually almost exactly the same color. Okay, so the pH level is gonna be somewhere between a three and a four. Put that there. You can have the students uh, use tiny pieces of paper to label it as well so you can keep it straight. But I'm going to leave that there. The next thing I'm going to test is, since we're on citrus fruits, I'm going to test an orange wedge for orange juice. I'll try not to drop it everywhere. Now my prediction is that because it's a citrus fruit like lemon, it's also going to be an acid, but I don't think it's going to be as pink because oranges are not as sour as lemons are. So let's see what happens. Okay, was my prediction correct? Um, I say yes. Why? Because it's not as pink or it's not as acidic as the lemon juice or the white vinegar. So it's still an acid, but it has more of a pH level of five or six. Okay, and let's see if we can find a base. So I'm going to use baking soda and I'm going to predict that it's going to be a base um, and the fancy chemistry word is an alkaline um, because it doesn't, it's white and powdery kind of like the, the laundry detergent was so I'm going to use that observation to make a guess that it's a base and that's all I have to go on because I don't really know anything about bases. So I'll put it in the next cup and so because it's a base I think it's going to be more greenish blue. Definitely, it's not going to be as green as the laundry detergent, but let's see. We'll actually put it on this end. And again, they don't have to be woo, exact. Use your stir sticks if you need to. Remind them to use clean stir sticks every time so they're not cross-contaminating. And uh, it didn't turn green at all. It kind of turned a, a lighter, brighter blue. So it seems like it's going to be a pH of between 9 and, and 10. Let's try something else. Um, we'll try pickle juice. <laughs> so we just get a jar of pickles. We'll pour some out into a cup first. We don't want any of the pickle, just the pickle juice. And uh, I've seen my grandma make this before, pickle juice, and she seems to use a whole lot of vinegar. So I'm going to guess that it's going to be a bright fuchsia pink color, like the white vinegar. And I'm going to test pour that right here on the last few. Again, use a clean stir stick, stir it, see what color it's turned. And it seems to be a pH level, let's compare it, of 6. They're not as acidic as I, as I thought it would be, between a five and a six. It's uh, darker than the orange juice, but lighter than lemon in terms of color. So it's uh, more acidic than orange juice, but not as acidic as lemon juice. So I'm gonna put that right there. And so in effect, you're creating this kind of crazy rainbow. Uh, but we'll stop right there so I could show you part two of the experiment. But remember, to emphasize that what they're learning about is pH levels, which tests um, the acid level or the basic level of a substance, and that bases have a pH of greater than seven, and they're gonna be in the green and blue tones, and acids have a pH of less than seven, and they're gonna be in the pink and red tones.